Lonely Lake Monster, Chapter 5 Worm Doctor There she stood in her white lab coat, her long black hair cascading over her shoulders like a river of ink. She looked down the driveway and waved. Pearl bounced on her flip-flops and waved back. This was it. Her mother would meet Dr. Wu, and Ben's grandfather would meet Dr. Wu, and they'd see what a nice person she was. Then Pearl and Ben would go inside and begin their apprenticeships, and it would be the best summer ever. Dr. Wu walked with small, graceful steps. A stethoscope hung from her neck, its silver bell sparkling in the sun. No one said a word. The only sound was a quiet crunch, crunch, as the soles of the doctor's shoes pressed into the gravel. When she reached the gate, she pulled a ring of keys from her coat pocket and unlocked the pad padlock. After the gate swung open, she stepped out. Hello, she said, her voice calm and soft. I am Dr. Emerald Wu. She held out her hand to Mrs. Petal. Her right index finger was missing. Hello, I'm Susan Petal, Pearl's mother. And I'm Abe Silverstein, Ben's grandfather. Grandpa Abe also shook the doctor's hand. Welcome to Buttonville. Thank you. A few specks of yellow glitter dotted the doctor's cheekbones. Pearl remembered the glitter that had fallen from Dr. Wu's hair during their first visit to her office. She told them it was fairy dust. Ben, Pearl, are you ready to begin? Yes, they both said as they hurried through the gateway. But Dr. Will hel Wu held up a hand when Grandpa Abe and Mrs. Petal each took a step forward. I'm sorry, but only employees are allowed on the grounds. Worms are very delicate creatures. They require peace and quiet. Really? Mrs. Petal said. I never knew that. Dr. Wu grabbed the gate. Good day, she said. But I thought, Mrs. Petal frowned, I mean, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So would I, said Grandpa Abe. Pearl's shoulders slumped. What if Dr. Wu gave an answer they didn't like? Or what if Ben got permission to go inside but Pearl didn't? She chewed her gum doubly fast. Questions? Dr. Wu folded her arms. Very well. Where are you from, Mrs. Petal asked. Iceland. Pearl wondered if Dr. Wu was telling the truth about Iceland. After all, she'd lied about the hospital being a place for worms. Maybe she was also lying about where she came from. I've never heard of a worm hospital, Grandpa Abe said. What will Ben and Pearl be doing? cleaning the worm cages, feeding the worms, all things worm-related. Worms are creatures deserving of care just like any other creature. Dr. Wu raised her eyebrows as if daring them to question her further. There are thousands of worms living in the dirt right here on the hospital grounds, and there are hundreds of thousands more, maybe millions, in Buttonville. Oh my, that's a lot of worms, Mrs. Petal said. Did you know that there are almost 3,000 kinds of worms and the largest one can grow up to 22 feet long? 22 feet long? Grandpa Abe chuckled. Oi, Gewalt! Who needs a worm that long? Pearl wondered if the 22-foot-long worm was another lie. Or maybe it was one of the imaginary creatures that Dr. Wu kept in her hospital. Yuck, she thought. We need both big and small worms, Dr. Wu told Ben's grandfather with a smile. Without them, the known world wouldn't have such lovely dirt. Known world? Grandpa Abe leaned on his cane. Did you say known world? Dr. Wu stopped smiling. Her expression turned serious. I didn't say any such thing. Why would I say known world? That would be a strange thing to say. Pretty sure that's what you said, Mrs. Petal confirmed. Pearl and Ben shared a look of understanding. They'd heard this term before. While visiting Dr. Wu's hospital a few days ago, they'd been told that there was a known world and an imaginary world. Buttonville and Los Angeles were located in the known world. 
How exactly you got to the imaginary world was still a mystery, one that Pearl was determined to solve. A white van drove up and parked, and a young man jumped out. Delivery for Dr. Wu, he announced, dropping two large boxes on the sidewalk. Then he climbed back into the van and drove off. Kiwi-flavored jelly beans, Ben read as he examined the label. labels. Would you be so kind as to collect those, Dr. Wu asked, motioning to Ben and Pearl. They each picked up a box. Then Dr. Wu shook the ring of keys. Well, it's time to begin. The apprentices will be escorted back through the gate at precisely three o'clock. Dr. Wu closed the gate and snapped the padlock into place. Why do you keep the gate locked? Grandpa Abe wondered from the other side of the bars. There were only two reasons to lock a gate, Dr. Wu said, lowering her voice, as if she was about to tell a secret. Everyone, even Pearl and Ben, leaned as close as possible to hear. Reason number one? To keep things in. What sorts of things? Grandpa Abe asked. Dr. Wu hesitated. Well, the worms, of course. We don't want sick worms leaving the hospital before they're cured. Worms are masters of escape. Grandpa Abe's mouth fell open. Pearl could guess what he was thinking. How can a locked gate stop a worm? That makes total sense, Pearl said, trying to be helpful to Dr. Wu. It makes no sense, Ben whispered. Of course it makes no sense, Pearl whispered back. But you can't tell your grandfather, grandfather about not wanting the Sasquatch to escape. And reason number two, Mrs. Pearl asked the doctor. Reason number two, to keep things out. Things like fishermen and birds. They are the enemies of worms. Now that makes sense, Mrs. Petal said with a nod. Dr. Wu tucked the key ring into her coat pocket. Time is of the essence. If the questions are concluded, I would like to get back to the hospital. Okay by me, Grandpa Abe said. See you later, Ben. Mrs. Petal smiled through the bars at Pearl. Have a nice time, and be sure to call me if you need anything. Mrs. Petal accepted an offer from Grandpa Abe for a ride back to the dollar store. As Pearl and Ben watched the car drive away, they sighed with relief. That was close, Pearl said, as she and Ben hurried to catch up with Dr. Wu, who was already halfway up the drive. The package Pearl carried wasn't very heavy, even though the label said it contained a thousand fun-sized boxes of jelly beans. Are you having a party or something? The jelly beans are for the fairies, Dr. Wu replied. They prefer tropical flavors such as coconut, pineapple, and mango. But kiwi is their favorite. Pearl couldn't believe it. Pearls eat candy? Fairies eat candy? Fairies eat sugar in all of its forms. It is their primary source of nourishment. Yellow glitter drifted from the doctor's hair. A few flecks landed on Pearl's box. Can I meet a fairy? she asked. Dr. Wu didn't respond. She quickened her pace. What are we going to do? Ben asked as they headed up the hospital's front steps. Steps. We're not really going to work with worms, are we? Of course we're not going to work with worms, Pearl said. Then she frowned. We're not, right? Still, Dr. Wu said nothing. Was she always this mysterious? As they followed the doctor inside, the sound of an engine roared in the distance. Pearl whipped around. Mrs. Mulberry's car screeched to a stop outside the gate. Yoo-hoo, Dr. Wu, Mrs. Mulberry called, scrambling from the car. I've brought my daughter to meet you. You, Pearl didn't waste a second. She dropped the jelly bean box, pushed Ben out of the way, and flung herself at the doctor's front door. Ben lost his balance and fell as Pearl slammed the door shut. Good riddance, Victoria. Then she slid the deadbolt into place. What did you do that for? Ben complained as he struggled to his feet. I didn't mean to push you over, but Victoria Mulberry is trying to steal my apprentice job. I think I broke my tailbone. He rubbed his backside. We haven't even started, and I'm hurt already. Sorry, Pearl said. Then she looked around and gasped. Dr. Wu, 
had disappeared.